All SSL broadcast consoles can be upgraded to include digital audio workstation control. This allows the console to control external DAW track levels from the console faders, parameters from the knobs, and the DAW's transport from the control surface, features that are extremely useful in a broadcast production recording environment. The DAW option allows us to configure eight fader controller bays in any of the console layers. I've set up two bays here, so I've, I've set up a 16 on this side of the console, I have a 16 fader door controller. On this side of the console, uh, I have 16 normal channels from the console. As well as our eight fader control bays, we have a number of functions that we can control either through a series of touchscreen menus or that we can assign to soft keys in the center section. For example, here I've got my primary transport commands, stop, play, on screen, we have the door counter, and as you can see, we're getting metering back from the DAW, both mono and stereo meter indications. My transport stop. Up here, I have got direct access to the first five memory locations. I can switch DAW windows. I can call up a different set of commands for timeline manipulation. I can audition edit points. Very importantly, I can enable automation and I've got access to the automation modes on the system. The moment I have a 16 fader controller connected to a Pro Tools. In addition to level control, I have access to panning through the rotary encoders at the top of the channel strip. We can switch those to control send levels. We have the same ability as the C10 to flip sends onto the faders in which case if I was dealing with stereo sends, these become the balance and pan control for the sends on Pro Tools. Unflip, they become the send level controls. Like any controller, we have the ability to bank up and down as many tracks as the session contains. So I can do this either with my bank keys or channel by channel. As this is just a standard um, console there, it will be automatically saved in, any, in, in the project and I can, I can return, I can, I can bring this, this back at any time. It is possible to conf configure anything from a single bay to, on this surface, we could have a 32 fader Pro Tools controller. Um, so it makes it very easy to, to switch to, to a sort of post-production mode on the console um, from the standard live, live production operation. It's compatible with any workstation that supports the Mackie Huey interface. That includes workstations such as Logic, Cubase, Nuendo, and Pyramix. To control the, the automation in the console, we pull up the Auto Modes menu, and then the control key is, is the ASG key on the front panel. That's repurposed for automation modes. Hold that down. Initially, the Scribble strip label displays the current automation mode. If I want to change that, then I just can select a, a different mode from the front panel. If I want to go to latch. In the encoder section, these become the select keys to, to attention the channel strips in Pro Tools. And then this obviously is the channel mute, Pro Tools channel solo. Very simply, we start off in play. The moment I do that, then I've now dropped into write. The flashing automation indicators have now gone solid, and I'm writing automation. When I let go of the fader, it drops back out, and they go back to touch ready. If I just play that section back, then you'll see the moves that I made will play back. So very, very simple. These are basically our read and write indicators. They show the status of the automation on the automation modes on the Pro Tools channels. So we have full control over automation, sends, and panning.